Hey, I'm Dennis from This Side of Anarchy, and welcome to Band to Band, my show where I let you in on my getting to know other independent bands that I support on social media and that support me in return. And we get to know each other a little better by answering five questions each. Please hit the subscribe button if you're on YouTube or listening on podcasts so you can keep up to date and enjoy this episode. Welcome to this episode of Band to Band. My name is Dennis from This Out of Anarchy. Uh, today we're with Dead Eye Doll from uh, New Jersey, right? New Jersey. Yeah. And we swapped shirts, so I got theirs on. Okay. Represent, bro. I got mine on. So good to see you guys. It's been really good that, it's, especially last week, I did Agency Panic from Ireland. It's like, yeah. it's really cool. You're like, just like texting these people or, you know, not texting, uh, Twittering these people, tweeting them and talking to them. And then they're like faceless people. Yeah. That's why I started this. I'm like, and now when I'm tweeting him and like, all right, I know what the guy looks like. I, I know I've talked to him and it's like, it's like really cool. So now yeah. when we tweet, now when we tweet each other, it's like, hey, I know that guy. He, he, it's just not some faceless text going out there. Plus, you know, the promotion's great and everything. You know, have more content out there. Definitely. All right, so um, I guess introduce each one of yourselves so everybody knows you and maybe just a little bit about yourself, uh, what you play in the band, what made you pick up an instrument, how long you've been playing, what you play, you know, uh, how many bands you've been in, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. any yeah. notable bands, you know, crap like that. Yep. Well, I'm Johnny. I'm the drummer. Uh, played. We all been playing in bands together since we are kids, man. Like, we started doing this when we were 12, 13 years old, and, uh, Get together in someone's basement, smoking a bunch of weed, and trying to like play the records that we love to listen to. You know what I mean? Like definitely. And it's seriously like me and Juice and Jeff, like we've been playing in, in different incarnations of bands since, you know, since we were in high school, like early high school, middle school, even for some of us. You know what I mean? Like I met Jeff in sixth grade. He oh. brought his car over to uh, play Van Halen, and you know, like. Uh, he ended up swimming and drinking with my brother in the pool, and then me and the other guy ended up playing all day. But you know, these relationships you build when you're young, and it's very cool that we've been able to maintain it for this long. Oh, definitely, that's cool. Uh, you know, this is Juice, he's the lead guitar player and the singer. Yeah, uh, I bought my first guitar off Jeff. Actually, I, I think I swindled it out of you like halfway. My first one. Yeah, yeah a, I know that guitar because he's that's the guitar he brought over to my house with his a Fender Squire Stratocaster. <laughs> yeah, it was like the first year Squire. It was like a really nice guitar. It was a New Year's Eve, and we made the deal while Jeff was about ten cans of beer into the night. So I said, you know, I said you didn't remember me giving you that money last night. He says no. <laughs> I said, hey, I don't know what you did with it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you still owe me. That's all right. Um, I'm Jeff. Bass player that I now um, playing bass since I was 13 years old. Uh, I started out playing guitar, and we realized we needed a bass player, and I got swindled in playing bass. Uh, there's no doubt because of the influence of Dickie Six. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, I play basically right now just strictly Fender and Ampeg. Uh, like Johnny said, we've all been in bands together our whole life, playing. You know. Four or five different incarnations of three of us. As far as Dead Eye Doll, you know, we got together, I guess it was like the summer of 2017. You know, the three of us said we want to get together, start doing stuff again, man, because we took a little break and, you know. And we, and Dennis, this is, we started doing everything ourselves, man. We started doing all the recording, all the album is mixed, recorded, everything, tracked. We sent it out at the end to get mastered, but. Everything is we're doing we're doing on our own, which we weren't able to do 15, 20 years ago. You know, it was all studio work. You were putting up a lot of money to make albums. We used to call them demos. Yeah. Now it's called records. Right. But, you know, we're doing everything ourselves now, and that's what's really cool about the indie scene. A lot of these bands uh, are all self-produced. Uh, you know, they're producing everything, the, the recordings, the mixes, everything. Cool. So, uh, 
Well, how how'd the name come about? How did you guys how did you guys choose that one? You know, we would just go in through the names. And we were it's like everything in this band. It was a collaboration. It was uh, so I think I said because uh, I have a nickname for myself. Ty, they call myself Johnny Tyree, and I was uh, saying, oh, Johnny Tyree's dollhouse, uh, dollhouse. Dead, you know, Jeff saying dead doll, Drew says this, and all of a sudden it's like dead eye doll, and it's like yeah, wow. Thought it sounded cool. You know, and it sounded cool. We've had some, you know, it's hard when you're coming up with a name for a band, especially, and we think we came up with a pretty good one with this one. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's definitely but cool. Well, that is, it was like we're collaborating on writing a band. We have a list of different names, and we're saying this, and we're saying that, and all of a sudden it just pops out two people, three people say two different things, and boom. Yeah, it's good. It sounds like you guys have had uh, chemistry for a long time, and that—that's that, what it takes. You got to just count. Yeah, yeah. chemistry. Yeah, we can, you know, we we record. We just finished. We're in the middle of the session right now. We've been recording mm -hmm. all day, and all, and we're going to continue recording into the night. But it's like, you know, like anything, man. We, we're always collaborating. We're always uh, the chemistry is definitely there. Sometimes we want to kill each other too, but you know, yeah, we're yeah. Not a band going on. We're always hanging out. So yeah, yeah, well, just, we're always too. friends above everything. You know. Yeah, yeah that's true. Known each other all the time, like Johnny said. I met Johnny in sixth grade. I met Juice in third grade. Yep. So, you know, that's cool. So it's doing the chemistry, which is good. Yeah, it's definitely cool. Right, so we we want to kill each other sometimes. We're like brothers, so it's cool. You know, it's it makes the writing process and the collaboration process easier when you could get in the fights the way we get into it for two hours and then step back and, and realize that you know we're best friends and brothers, so it's no big deal. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, definitely. But let's talk. Let's talk about you, brother. Yeah, yeah, uh, we were into your stuff, man. Really cool, and like the really cool uh, West Coast sounding, like punk sound, like. And, and, and believe it or not, like I even hear like some New York hardcore, and, like like we're saying, oh man, that sounds like S.O.D. Yeah. the other night. I before. know S.O.D. is one of my favorite bands. They're, they're yeah, that, I, I didn't even know, and I heard it. I could hear it in the music. I'm like, oh, that sounds like uh, New York hardcore, you know? It's very cool stuff, man. Yeah, man. And uh, the one song I was listening to them, and I was laughing because we used it on our record as well, but it was made me chuckle. There's one song, you use the vibraphone in it, mm -hmm. the vibra slap. Yeah, you know, vibra slap, yeah. One song, and uh, what's the name of that song? Shit, song. I, don't, I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> I did, I, I, there's actually a few of them on, on, on my few albums. Uh, I don't remember yeah. which. Very cool stuff, though, man. Like, it's got a really awesome, like, like punk sound and like it's it's authentic sounding you know that's that's what i love about it i appreciate it man appreciate it Probably, i love it i love the indie stuff and i really love the indie punk stuff and the stuff that has a hard edge it doesn't necessarily have to be punk but if it's heavy metal or hard rock or whatever you know whatever your thing is is, is i like the harder side of indie oh definitely now, dennis you've been playing music a long time obviously you know I, one of the questions i wanted to ask was what was yeah. the iconic show that you or venue that you've been to or played in been a part of well that's it's a pretty hard one <laughs> <laughs> um what well, the, the most of la clubs you know around hollywood and stuff we you know like the whiskey i've played the club yeah, yeah, great venue, club lingerie. there's a place yep. in chinatown punk punk place called the hong kong cafe we played and of course, uh, Gilman Street up in Berkeley, we played. Uh, there was a place in Hollywood we played a lot called Raji's. It was pretty popular and it was like a. Grew 30... up in California. Pardon? Grew up in California. Yeah. No. What did you, 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 you say again? I was, you grew up in California? No, no, no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been here thirty. I've been here thirty years though, so yep. it's basically my home. <laughs> yeah. What are some of your big, what are some of your influences, your early, like, influences? Like, what you like to listen to when you were younger, you know, when you first start coming up? Uh, that, that, that's why I think my sound is a little more kind of unique, because I, I have had so many influences. Sure. From, yeah. from, you know, from Van Halen to... To Alice Cooper, to ACDC, even Mozart, yep. Mozart, <laughs> Mozart, big band, you know, jazz, uh, yep. blues, and 50s rock, and just, just so many. Yeah, yeah. 
And yeah, Meta yeah. Metallica, Anthrax, you know. Yeah, us, it's like the usual suspects. We loved, you know, all that stuff. Zeppelin and, and the Metallica, Anthrax, all that New York stuff that was coming out in the, you know, the thrash stuff. And then yeah. the California stuff as well, the West Coast stuff. Yeah. Uh, Kiss for us was like, you know. Yes. We, I know a lot of people don't want to admit it, but uh, oh, we yeah. loved Kiss, man. Like, Kiss was it for me, you know. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I used to dance around pretending I was a Kiss when I was you know, seven years old. That's how I met Jeff on Halloween. Yeah, yeah, they both were, we were dressed both up. dressed as Gene Simmons. There was a parade in our elementary school. Parade us out. He was and in the I'm, third grade. I was in the second grade. I was walking this way. He was walking by this way. And we wound up looking at each other, and he was fucking pissed at me because he I just wanted to choke him, man. You know? And right. he had one of the classic costumes, and I actually had the wig and the, make, the real makeup. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's still mad at me to this day. So yes, he won't admit it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So some of the shows, like uh, the one up in Gilman Street, there was a. It was the show where it's a semi-famous show that uh, some some assholes were over there and they they beat up Jello Biafra. He was at the show and everything. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If you, I don't know if you heard about heard about that way back in the '90s. I think it was '94, but right. yeah, I was we were playing that show, and I guess our he talked to our singer for a while, and he kind of seemed to like us. That was kind of interesting. And I then, love Kennedy's. Well, like we said, going into the recording of this last record, we were listening to so much punk, and you know we have wide uh, range of influences. Mm -hmm. you know, punk to uh, we even you know we like all you know all assets of punk, hardcore, and uh, Regular, just straight up the original, like The Clash and The Sex Pistols and stuff like that. Right. We recorded the pretty vacant single, you know. Uh, we just, you know, were so influenced and listening to so much Ramones and uh, Sex Pistols and New York Dolls when we were going into the recording, which is, you know, a lot of people don't consider them punk, but we, their attitude was really like, right. it, we really identified with them, the New York right. Dolls. Right, right. So, uh, I've heard your album and singles, and uh, of course you mentioned Kiss. It's, that's, that's what I, I hear Kiss and Motorhead, and I and there's something else I hear too that's really interesting, but I can't remember think of it. But uh, yeah. um, let us all hear it. <laughs> someone said to us, it sounds like Kiss, Motorhead, and Guns N' Roses had a baby, and <laughs> it, like the, the stain left on the bed, you know, like. <laughs> But you're right. And Kiss is like I said before, like even like in the production of it, we like we were going into the mix and saying, "Oh, let's make it sound like rock and roll over," and you know, like let's let's try to get you know like a real classic sound on it. And it's why we use real amps and real drums on the record. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and with like I said, with all the technology, with all the recording technology now, it it makes it a lot easier to, to achieve those goals for less money. Oh, know? definitely. Like, Definitely, no doubt. So, so what? So, what is your guys' writing process? Does uh, one of you write the song and kind of the other guys down, or do you, or do you pretty? Or is it pretty much like you come up with the part and he comes up with the part? And yeah, kind of, that is, it's, yeah. it's a collaboration. Jeff will come with a song and say, "Here's the song, guys," and me and Juice will jump on it and rip it apart. And Jeff will try to protect it like his baby, and we will <laughs> crush the reeds and you know yeah. be like. Oh, this verse sucks. This word sucks. This, and then you know, we'll juice some cup with a song, and we'll be like, "Oh, we like this part." You know, you know, it's really a, this band is really like a, a complete collaboration. Yeah, it's you know, sometimes we just even you know, we just we we all we jam. We'll just start playing a riff, and we just the chemistry. We just start mm -hmm. building off it and working together. And we all write lyrics too, and it's funny. You say this is one process we'll use. Jeff will do, Jeff will come and he'll say, "I need a second verse." And you know, we'll just be hanging out in the studio, and he'll say, "I need a second verse. I want you to. T I want a waitress and a fucking cop and a fucking uh, burnt <laughs> toast in this in this verse. I want both to be mentioned, but you got to make it sound cool and make it happen in this verse. You know what I mean? And then we'll cut. We'll start collaborating. Someone will throw a line out, and then someone will come out with a second line. Like, and you know, sometimes you're just looking for that perfect word, and it. It could be so simple as, and everyone will love you. 
you know what I mean? And meanwhile, you're searching for hours for the perfect words, right. and it's just something so simple like that. And someone will blurt that out, and that will become part of the song. Even the new album, it kind of just like, we yeah. were in the middle of mixing the first Dead Eye Doll album, and we were still jamming and re rehearsing and planning for the future and continuing to write and put more content out. And the album kind of just like fell into our laps. We hit this groove you know, of like songwriting, and we were just so happy with the material. And it, it was just such a great collaboration, chemistry we felt, and you know, we're excited about it, man. We can't, you know, wait to get it out there. Definitely, that's cool. Yeah, we were very lucky that this second record like came to us like it just it just there was not a lot of effort to like you know what it was that is after you record the first record you if you're not you don't want to play those songs anymore. Right. Like, was, well, I can't remember what you know what it is like. Like yeah, because once it's done and it's right and it's finished and it's mixed and it's time as an artist it's time to move to the next yeah the next thing and this one came easy which was you know lucky for us yeah right. Now he's got the <laughs> yeah, and, and and being a solo artist like me, it's not like I'm going to play him out anywhere. But you know, you, you oh. guys just have to play the old songs when you play out. If we ever well, get to play out again with this yeah. stupid stuff. Well, these days too, now with you know COVID and everything going on, it sucks. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's totally changed. The you know, music was changing as it was, and now it's completely changed with with COVID. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. The way to promote your band, the way to push your band—it was changing with the technology anyway. But now it's totally gone to a different level, and it's changing. Yeah. Even more. You know what? More people are home, and more people are tuned in, and you know it might not be a bad thing. It's a bad thing that we can't play out and do all that. But there's more people tuning into this and looking well, at stuff, and, you know, and, and you know. But we'll get by it. Everyone, you know, we'll get through this time, and and yeah. you know. Live shows will be alive and well again. I think people will be itching to go out and see bands. We Even so, it was like when we came, when we started this project, we really wanted to, we want to put, you know, we, you know, like ambition is everything, but we want to have a lot of content. We want to uh, get another record out there within yeah. 12 months of having our last full length record out. We want to constantly be providing content. And if that, I think like the recording end of it, like that's forever. The people have that forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah show it's great everyone comes down has a good time but that recording is really what they go home and listen to in their headphones and the records are what last forever you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. and i just we want to just be the band that can provide and so many indie bands have given so much content you know what i mean it's why Absolutely. we try to make a video for every you know for every uh song we have on the record mm -hmm. we try to do a video right so what, why did you guys choose uh, Pretty Vacant and how you guys decided to do that? And and how was it? Because uh, I know, you, don't you have to get uh, permission and you have to pay yeah, yeah, we rights and all that crap? Who did you go through and how was it? Uh, we actually went through CD Baby. We did everything with the license. And they secured the license for us. Yeah, they're our aggregator, CD Baby. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I, I do too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they have a company that they use that we went through. We secured all the licensing rights. Um, as far as the song, I mean, we wanted to do some covers. We don't. We, we that was actually the first cover in all the recordings I've made in my life. I think it's the first cover song I ever played on. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's always been original. We actually picked a bunch of songs and we recorded them. And you know, we liked that one the best. Uh, there was a couple other we recorded that we didn't put out. And we felt like the Sex day. Pistols, like they they suit our style. They're like, uh, you know, they're like the early birds, like. All that stuff is like the early version of what actually happens later on with Aerosmith and well, Aerosmith was around then, but like yeah. that whole glam scene comes out of that whole '80s glam scene. Bands, the Pussycat, uh, Motley Crue, uh, all the hair metal bands—they were really just like extensions of that. Like it was like a polished-up version of those punk songs. So, yeah. and we grew up playing like we played in all types of bands. But we always went where the girls were. If the girls wanted to hear, you know, this, we were gonna we were gonna play that. So, like, we were always influenced by those glam bands and uh, the sound of that type of that brand of rock and roll was really like something that we all identified with. And that song, and we love punk as well. But that song reflected that that attitude. Yeah, yeah. We felt it was in our wheelhouse too. We yeah, that too. It was tough, though. You know, you. you Kind of weird going in, you know, you're afraid doing a session of the song, like how, how's it going to be? Well, that's it too, you, you know, like, like it's like 
you're, you're, you're going on sacred ground then. So we try to stay pretty close to the yeah. original. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's but, always, that's always yeah. an issue. Yeah, well, because as they're recording it, I got the headphones on and I'm saying, as Juice is doing the vocals or Jeff's doing the bass, I'm saying, you know, you gotta, we got to keep it pure to the Sex Pistols. Because as, as, for me, as a Sex Pistols fan, I'm ready to jump on your attack if you change it too much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I thought it was a little ballsy for us too, but most indie artists don't realize it's pretty easy to acquire the the rights to do the song. You have to you have to pay up front for a few downloads, but not many. Mm-hmm. And uh, once those downloads are taken, yeah, you or those, you know, once you sell them, then you have to restock them. So uh, the original band, whoever their aggregator is, is right. collecting that money. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so where are you guys at recording? Somebody's basement or what? What? What do you, do you guys? Uh, yeah, we have a studio. What kind of, so- what kind of software are you using or, or what? Uh, we're using Ableton for our DAW. Uh, we got a bunch of focus rights. You know, three of them that we use. Um, we're 57 sure, 57 yeah, maniacs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we have. Oh yeah. Yeah. We got a bunch of 57. We got the big bass. We have nice condenser money. mics as well as as well we use for overhead the vocals and stuff but like uh i heard a story years ago that uh rick rubin used nothing but 57s on blood sugar sex magic on the drums and ever since then i was like you don't ever need anything but a 57 on a drum yeah, yeah. You know, look base drums, i'm talking toms and snare yeah right you know. yeah everything's done in-house we do everything ourselves the only thing we did was get a master out of house we wanted someone else to master it so that's so you know aside from mastering we do everything yeah we mix cool. it we wanted two different studios we have two different studios set up we mix and record in two different locations but and with juice has so many martial lamps it's not even funny like if you see behind us this is just a small <laughs> scattering <laughs> we got other marshals over there double i mean it's just like martial heaven over here so and that helps with the sound of the record because with that that martial sound is rock and roll you know oh yeah yeah, definitely. So, Dennis, what's going on with uh, you and Vince from Farmerside? Well, uh, I had to look up how it came about because I said hell, he didn't remember, so I had to look go through a bunch of old texts. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, how the hell did, they, how did we do this? And it's like, because uh, I I knew, but it, uh, like earlier in the year, you know, Demon Scar was doing collabs with. Uh, Creep scene, and then Creep scene yep. did with Sound Ninja, and everybody seemed to be doing collaborations. And, uh, and all those guys work so hard. Uh, Demon Scar and, and Creep scene, and that the whole indie scene that's mm-hmm. blown up. It's just awesome. Those guys, so much heart and so much good music coming out of all those all those bands that you know are, yeah. are affiliated with that. Yeah, and there was just some conversation going on, and I think Demon Scar just mentioned something about, wouldn't it be cool if Pharmacide and This Out of Anarchy did a did a collab yeah. together? And like I was like, hey, yeah, that would be pretty cool, you know. And I'm like, and then I was gonna contact Vince, and then he contacts me first, and he goes, hey, yeah, I saw that post. Do you want to do it? I'm like, sure, I'll do. It. Yeah. <laughs> so so I was just like, hey, that's a good idea. And we we were on. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, a while ago, there was a thing called underground mic, underground mics. Yeah, yeah. UGM, and we were we were on the UGM rock thing, and they were doing a thing for a while. I guess it already shut. I guess he just shut it down. But uh, he had a couple video things we did for a while, and then I met Vince on there. We we were doing like a video thing on how to how bands can collaborate and everything. So then he he found out he was in Los Angeles, and I'm like, hey, like where are you in Los Angeles? And, it turns out we're like 10 miles away. And it's like, oh, it's, nice. it's, you, guys so, get, you guys are actually getting together. <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, we've been getting together for lunch every yep. three to four months, you know, and like, hey, we got to go out to lunch. So he'll buy one time, I'll buy one time, one time we'll get on to Hollywood. And when what we could you? go when we could go out, so last time he came, last a few weeks ago, he came over here and and we did stuff. And, uh, and yeah, because... Uh, Earlier in the year, too, or maybe late last year, I was gardening in my yard, and we had gophers, and I just started making up this metal song, because you remember Caddyshack and uh, Bill Murray trying to blow up all those freaking gophers, 
you know, I'm sick and tired of my plants. You you nurture this tomato plant and everything, and all of a sudden the gopher just goes, ah, yeah. damn, my tomatoes. So I just started singing, die, you sucker, die to the gophers. So, so, so like I had this beat and stuff in my head and kind of thing, so I kind of did a thing. Did yeah. I? Did a did a thing with it. so so me and Vince are gonna do that one. I I did the um, guitar part and the lyrics and the bass and I just sent it over to him, and he and he's got his uh, his uh, kit his electric kit and he's you know with the real drum sounds and he's he's got it he re- got it recorded and I'm waiting for him to export it and give me the WAV files so. You guys are gonna put it out. So we're gonna put it out. Good. And then, yeah, and then, then he's gonna come over and do some backups. He yep. he he put down some. That's put, awesome collaboration. I mean. Oh yeah. That's so cool that you guys are close enough that you can actually collaborate. Where do you do it at your studio? Uh, yeah. Yep. I don't have too much of a studio, but it's just a computer and a. Well, that's what it is now. And a dad. And the mic, and you're ready to go. That's you know it. what I mean? Like. Yeah. Right. Really- Really cool. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Uh, how many shows have you guys played when we could play before the we got shut down? And uh, what, what are some of the favorite bands you've played with? And uh, shout well, outs, the, shout outs, and from the local bands. Yeah, the three, the three of us. Like, like I said, throughout the incarnation of these bands, throughout the years, we we played so many venues, so many uh, shows. Oh, you know, in New York City, all the Limelight, Continental, Lismore Lounge, Don Hills, all the Lemours, like, Lemours back Archer. in the day, uh, all the ones in Jersey. We used to play all the time. We when, and there was a point where we were the we had a group, me, Ju, uh, Juice, and Jeff, and we were like the you know we were like the regular house band for like all the nationals that would come to play we would get the opening slot in a, yeah. a previous band we were in LA Guns, Fast the Pussycat, uh, you Clark. name them like we played with like every national that came to town. Uh, That's cool. Hair metal bands like uh what was that band? Firehouse yeah. and uh Jackal. Jackal, Jackal. and uh Bullet Boys. Every <laughs> like or, like over even uh, but like we were always diverse. We could always play with anyone. We'd also play with Overkill and you know other bands like that. Like another band we used to play with all the time too, Love Hate. Yeah, California. Love Hate. Mm-hmm. There was a local New Jersey band called Law and Order back in the day. They were yeah. pretty big. They were New signed York. to MCA and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, they were New York band, Staten Island band, yeah. and uh, we would you know always open for them. And you know like I said, we were uh, like played with so many different like. You know, open for so many different nationals as they would come. We were playing back area. in the uh, Trickster days too, before Trickster got signed. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that that's area. like our that's like our mm-hmm. area and our class. class you, know? you know, like our our graduated class in those <laughs> years was like Trickster was the one band out of our local area. Not the one band because Monkey Pup. We went to school with the guys from yeah. Monkey Pup. You know what I mean? I don't know if you know mm-hmm. them out there, but they were pretty big. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah Monkey Pup. They were, they, you know, they they were right from our hometown. Those guys, you know what I mm-hmm. mean, and other bands, you know, as well. You guys play anywhere in the country, or just mainly in New York? Just New York, Philadelphia. Yeah, uh, yeah we would venture out to Pennsylvania North, and North and Carolina. Places, and North Carolina. We go as far as like down south, like to North Carolina and stuff. They had a cool metal scene down there back in the day, and. Uh, Never made it across the country though to LA or anything. And you know what's funny? Like when we were 18 and stuff at Juice's house, hanging out, we would be dreaming of we're gonna pack up the van and go to LA and you know we're gonna take, we're gonna take the strip, we're gonna take the whiskey down and we'll, we'll be playing the Troubadour and we'll be uh, Gazaris or whatever you know back in the day. It would yeah. Cause you heard the stories like oh Poison packed up their van and went out and they became big stars. You know what I mean? Like, the thing is too, if back in the day, and we were we're like. Five miles outside of New York City, it was just so much. Yeah, there's a lot happening here. Yeah, like, well, just everywhere. Right. Weekend between the you know northern yeah. New Jersey and New York. It was I remember crazy. my brother coming home with like from my brother would go to the CB's matinees and he would come home. He would stop at Bleaker's Bob's, is the record store in the village, and he would buy all the hardcore records. And he'd come home with Agnostic Front. And I always tell the story of. I just recently was listening to Agnostic Front. I didn't realize Victim in Pain is like 38 seconds long. 
I thought it was like an hour and a half because <laughs> you would just play the record over and over and over and over again. And I, my recollection of the song is at least it's got to be four minutes. The song, I think, is like 48 seconds or something. And it's just, you know, it's just, you know, those times in New York, you know, with so much happening with music, like we, we didn't really feel like we had to leave. Yeah. That's cool. Cool. Uh, I guess this is your about, question. Dennis, where where'd you really grow up? Like, what was the scene like? Um, I grew up pretty much uh, in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Out in Ohio. Yeah. I've spent some summer, you know, some weeks in the summertime up in Ohio. It's very cool. I like it. Reminds yeah. me a lot of Jersey, Ohio, actually, like the yeah. suburbs. He was from Independence outside of Cleveland. Mm. So, uh, was there a scene by you at the time? Like, um, well, see, my, my parents never really let me go out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? that's, it's like, that's why, it's, that's why uh, you, we went with the anarchy. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Out. I mean, it's, 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 uh, I didn't like being told what to do. And, uh, yeah, that's rock and roll. That's I'm it. always, always questioning everything. So I, that's my two, uh, <laughs> things. So basically, it's, and literally one week after I graduated high school, I was at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas going through basic yeah, training. Yeah. And my mom was crying, and she oh. and she hated me for that. Just that right, one right. aspect. That's the one aspect of me. She, she never forgave me, I don't think, for leaving. Right how, long, how long were you in the service? So thank you for your service, by the way. Uh, was, you know, uh, four years. Four yeah, years. yeah, yeah. My brother was in as well, the agnostic front guy. After he cranked out agnostic front, he went and joined the the, the army, and uh, he went. They sent him over to Korea, but uh, they told him maybe Germany, but he ended up in Korea. You know. Yeah, that. yeah I got stuck in uh, South Dakota. That's you know that's yep. the extent of my. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but thank you, man. It's still you know any service Absolutely. is like uh, that. It, it, yeah, it, but it, yeah, it was kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of why I picked the Air Force because it was you know wasn't too rough and you like stay behind the lines and you're not getting yeah. shot at yeah like, was, i'm like yeah. i fix the stuff and then you go and do stuff yeah. that's awesome though that's an experience in itself as, yeah, a young, so, as a young person to go and do that you know? oh yeah i mean even now i mean I'm like, really i was like 18 years old working on a b-52 <laughs> fixing, the, <laughs> fixing all the fixing all the jamming equipment <laughs> Yeah. The radar jamming stuff. I'm like, wow, this is kind of. But yeah, I mean, pretty much it was basically after I got back on days, it was a nine to five job, except yeah. once in a while on the weekends. Yeah. So, and I was in a band out there, and uh, Bandy did covers. And it's ever since then, till 2000, even in all the bands I was in, I went back to Ohio, came out here. It's like, work practice write songs jam play out record you know just like constant over and over and over again now what about society you're talking about society gone mad that's the band you're in yeah that was that was one of them yeah that was scalpel well while i was in the air force i was in a band basically covers the whole the scene's totally different out there where there's there's not many bands out there so it's it's really different that instead of like having three or four bands play you only you actually had one band and you had to play like three different three sets so you have a lot of material <laughs> which is the complete opposite of what happened here at our scene growing I, up. I know yeah you have 30 minutes and we have 15 bands tonight yeah you know what i mean like, yeah that, like seriously like and like when you first get into it you know and then here in jersey like after like certain bands blew up everyone you know Bon Jovi happens and everyone wants to be a rock star and start a band and the clubs start taking advantage of that where you would actually have to almost pay to play. You know what I mean? Where they'd be like, you've got to buy 60 tickets and if you sell the 60 tickets, you keep the money, but you got to buy, you know, you got to sell the right. tickets. Yeah. And there were clubs running there, you know, like that in Jersey. This is, this is late 80s though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know, not late 80s, but yeah. mid to yeah, but that band we were able to play South Dakota, North Dakota, Denver, or Colorado, Wyoming, uh, Iowa, Nebraska. We just played that whole area over there. 
Yeah. And, and we'd, we'd like to be playing every weekend. We'd have to go here, go there, and practice. Yep. It was crazy. And then I went back to Ohio, was in a metal band for a few years, and then I decided to come out to L.A. And, you know, you put your ad in the newspaper out here. It was called The Recycler, and they called me up. And, and at that time, I was just, like, really beginning – to be in a punk band, you know, kind of wanted to try it out and everything, and and I had my my uh, I mean, they were laughing when I showed up. I had my checkered bands, my checkered bands, yeah, my a, a bullseye shirt, and I had this big big ass case. And I had a you know I had a custom flying V, and right. it was a custom, so the case had to be a little bit bigger. And they're like, it was, it, I mean, it fit, it barely fit in my car, you know, across the thing. It was, the case was so big. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then they're like, who the hell is this guy? And what the hell are you doing? Here? <laughs> you know? And then one guy didn't even expect me. And I like it. It's just, it. I, I just like, it. uh, <laughs> and then they started playing their songs and I would just like join along and it started to start playing them. And they're like, what the heck? He's like just playing all our songs. Like he knows them already. So it was just like. It was like, and they're like, all right, you're in. So, so then I ended up right, starting to write songs, and we wrote songs together. And uh, the first first album, I probably wrote about half the songs. And then um, the drummer, um, he was from Arizona, and he knew, you know, it's all a game of who you know. He knew this guy named Lee Joseph of Dionysus Records. He helped me out really. Um, we did we did this all ourselves too, even back then. Well, yeah, we used to do it too. We would do it with the task cabs and using mm -hmm. uh, whatever yeah. putting uh, the juice yeah. was passed of the task cab. Like, yeah. was, like uh, we would make fun recordings like that. But right. uh, now, with like I was saying, with the digital stuff, they got so much like yeah. out here at your hands with the mm -hmm. plugins and everything that it's uh, amazing. We, it's yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. And then, then he knew he knew Brett from Bad Religion too, somewhat. And then um, we recorded the. That's very cool. We recorded our first. He recorded our first. Uh, well, you know, we're a band. We didn't have that much money, so we got this enough songs for one side of the of the record, and then we did the recording and everything. And we were gonna have this bright idea of just having one side cut of the vinyl, and the other side just like virgin <laughs> and that was like that was like our plan and then it's like well we ended up gotten getting some more money up and we're like all right we can record another side so we went back nice. six months later recorded the, some more songs for the other side so then we ended up recording the full album and uh lee joseph helped us out you know from dionysus he got a distribution through more damn records which is uh jello's record company from uh alternative tentacles and then yeah. from, from there on you know society just we played from uh san diego to san francisco basically it's where we, where we played yep yeah just, the, whole, the whole coast just the whole coast uh fresno berkeley san diego la you know i saw the videos are you rocking out yeah that's awesome man we love it yeah and then you know we released we kept yeah, our, we got, about to I'm telling you, you better watch out. We're gonna come out to LA. We'll be knocking on your door because <laughs> we're saying to Jeff, I'm, we're gonna go to LA. We're gonna go to the whiskey. We're gonna go to the rainbow. We're gonna see everything we want to see. We're gonna uh, go to Hollywood. I'm gonna go to the 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 house for the Charlie Manson stuff. I'm gonna go up there. I'm gonna see every site I wanted to see in LA. Then I'm gonna take a car. I'm gonna drive to Vegas after this Corona is over. <laughs> it's all over. Somewhere in there, we're gonna jump your door for a jam, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely definitely yeah then we released uh four five or seven albums yeah and then in 99 we just kind of fell apart yeah, yeah. but you know yeah. still to get the to do five records is 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 credible i mean it's like yeah you know a lot of bands get together they do one good record and that's it and then you know personalities and this happens and that happens but it's like to five is like that's yeah. awesome to have the material to do five good records is, is awesome yeah that's pretty pretty cool 
Yeah, we've had our we had our personnel changes too because uh, our original singer kind of got sick of it and he wanted to go to college. So then we got another singer, and his wife got a job in New York for like MTV and VH1 programming or something. So he moved, and then. We never could really find a singer, so the the last the last couple records we just said, you know, let's just do it ourselves. So we just the bass player would sing what he could sing. I I kind of sing because I I really can't sing and play very much. It's just too yeah. hard. For, it's just too hard for me. There's only there's only certain ways of playing and singing that I can do. The two studs for us, it's incredible. The guys, yeah, up, because like you say, when you got to sing one thing. And then as a drummer, I don't have too much sympathy because we got to do a lot of things too. But yeah, like, yeah. it's tough, tough to sing and play well, guitar. This is the first band, especially ever, lead guitar. You know what I mean? Like, this is the first band I ever sang backups playing bass, and it's it's hard to to, to sing yeah. and play. You know, you're used to it. It's a different, you know. Yeah. Brain your brain. Yeah, you, you know, know. You do. You get it after a while. I'm only singing backups. I mean, I don't have to sing verses. This guy's got to do it all. But. but yeah, it's definitely you know it's tough. To do like as a drummer, I like I sing for me and Jeff sing backups on the records, but and like in a live situation, Jeff sings backups. As a drummer, I I don't really like singing in a live situation. You know what I mean? Like I like to drum it, but I love to sing. Is at the same time I love singing backups, but it, when we're playing live, I just leave it to Jeff and, and Juice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you handle the family life and the bands and the shows and the social media and all that you know, stuff? I say that because Jeff, you know, the social media takes so much time, you know, just to just to thank everybody who meant shout you out during the day, to, mm -hmm. you know, how to run through your feed and it's important. It's an important tool. Though. I mean, with social media, you know, oh, it's, yeah. yeah, for an indie band trying to get their music out there, you know, it's, it's you got to really, you know, promote yourself. So. Yeah. So we try to get everything out there. We try to put content out there. And that's about it. As far as family, I mean, we all family. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, so, so is Emily Jeff pretty much doing the social media, or? Oh, it's all of us. We it's all. all yeah. Guys? Yep. Yeah, we all participate in it. But like, you know, uh, we'll all take a, a piece of something and, and and do the work that it takes to get back to everybody and let them know that you know. The, the best thing that, you know, is what's happening on Twitter right now with, like, we were just involved with the Indie Underworld mixtape with Demon mm -hmm. Star and those guys, a lot of those guys you know. Right. Yeah. Like, just, you know, so many people hear our song that wouldn't normally hear our song, and that's thanks to really Demon Star, you know, like, uh, a lot of people, and those guys promoted the hell out of it, and they, they, they like I said, they did everything, they did the... They got everything, uh, the CDs made up, the artwork done. Like when you're doing your own record, you got to do all that stuff. And these guys, they did everything for that record. And like it got a lot of people to listen to a lot of people's music. You know, like I listened to like a lot of indie bands I never would have known existed. Oh, yeah. And, and it's because of that, you know, they were on the, in the Underworld mixtape. And I'm sure you know that like, music's a hobby. We love it, but it's work. Like right? to, to, to yeah. do it, you got to put it in time, you know. It's, oh, yeah. That takes a lot of time, but it's you know we love doing it. So, but like I was saying, with the social media, it takes a lot of time, but it's really worth it because like a lot of people hear your music who yeah. would never without yeah. Twitter, I probably would have never heard you know your, your songs. And I was yeah. listening the other night. I was listening to I had the headphones on and I was listening to to, to a lot of a lot of your music, and I probably would have never heard those songs. The song I was. Uh, I, you made me laugh when you were talking about writing the song the other day about like you're just in the yard looking at the gophers. Uh -huh. The song you have, it's uh, Change Your Tude. Is that yeah. the name? Gotta Change Your Tude, yeah. Gotta Change Your Tude. I was saying to myself, this, I'm thinking about you. I was thinking about your writing process as I'm listening to the song. I'm like, he must have ran into a real asshole that day that he <laughs> went home and wrote this song. No, you know what that one's about? My kids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like what? Yeah. It's like I, they're like you know, all you gotta do you know they're always they're always mad because of something you're like you know dude just change your attitude man and it'll be all better. <laughs> so that's what I wrote well, myself. Well, like I say, like without Twitter, I would have never heard that song. You know what I mean? That's cool. I appreciate that's it. Very, like we always say, if one more person hears it, it's worth it. You know? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, before the before the COVID thing, uh, how I'm just curious how the social media and the shows was there a was there a, did you were you able to get more people at the shows using well, social media or that's the funny thing is like it hit right as we were, we're getting our live set together. Oh, so but, you guys really didn't play much out. As, yeah, oh, as our, right our album came out in October, and we were saying we were, we always. We said to ourselves, we want to have content before we start going out and playing friggin' live shows everywhere. Right. We want the content to play, so we can go play for an hour and a half if we wanted to. Yes. So we said, let's write. We were, like I said, we started writing the second album. We said, we got the albums together, but then we started getting bored. Like around February, we said maybe we'll go play some live shows, and boom, we got shut down. So yeah, we were just to get a whole set together. Uh, yeah, but, so, summer. but yeah, yes. it was because you know we were. It was funny because we kept we were rehearsing them as live shows. You know, we'd come to the rehearsal and we'd be like. Tonight we're gonna to do the you know the set we're gonna do the mm -hmm. show and we would get together and then we just got shut down. And, but there's no doubt social media would help to get people to show. Yeah, I think else. so. I oh, think absolutely. it's a big help. I think I think the social media with, with music today is like where a lot of the scene is happening because there's so like even the live shows you go to see these live shows and the, you go there and there's there's ten people there for the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh -huh. I, I know well what that. <laughs> Yeah. Able like. <laughs> to build up that fan base and the yeah. best on social media. Yeah, we're hoping that the response of people wanting to get out and see shows being caged up this whole time. Yeah. Be, you know, out of sight. That too, I think when this is all over, people are going to want to go see live shows. I think you'll be able to draw up pretty easy. Yeah. I mean, because people are cooped up and they want to get out, especially here in Jersey. I'm sure all over the country. Mm -hmm. So who does your YouTube videos, and do you prefer lyric videos or just regular music videos? Well, I do it all the I've been doing all the videos. Uh, all right. I well, the reason I do the lyric videos, like, like uh, I like the lyric videos. I think when people don't know your music and they can listen to it and then see the words and understand what's being said, mm -hmm. it really gives insight to the music and the songs. So like. We released 11 lyric videos as if they were singles. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we put the record out as, in, as you know, 11 song full length album. Mm -hmm. And then as we, as we released the album, every couple weeks we release a new lyric video that we release as a, like a YouTube single. And a single for our social media because it gives us content to yeah. put up, oh, check out, uh, you know, check out Dead Eye Doll uh, official YouTube page and check out our official right. lyric videos. Right. And we get response on our other li lyric videos. Yeah. You know, some people don't like them. And th on our next record, our videos are going to be completely different. We're, we're going to be appearing more in the videos, more performance-based videos. Yeah. This yeah. was what we did because it was what we had. You know what I mean? Well, hoping yeah. to film, you know, right. hoping we we'll gonna shoot a real video for the single. We'll yeah, for this new single we're we'll recording we'll right now. Right. It's just, you know, the video's hard, man. It's so expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, to do anything that looks, we don't want to do something that doesn't look, doesn't have to look super great, but we, we like, you know, we like the, our songs to sound good. We like our records to sound good. We like our videos to look yeah. good. Man, I'm not saying at, at any kind of, uh, like, Beyonce level or anything like that, but as good as we, we always say, we got to make it as good as we can. And that's all we yeah. can do. We have to yeah. make it as good as we can. The recordings, the videos, and the music. You know? Cool, man. Let's see. Is that all your questions? I think you... And our new video, uh, new video, our new song will be out hopefully late September, early October. Yeah, yeah. With this new single we're working on, we love it. We, 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 we hope everyone likes it as much as we do. Uh, you guys, you guys do anything else for fun, or uh, is it all music all the time? We really play a lot of music. You know, we're always doing the music when we're, we're fucking smoking weed. <laughs> 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 you know, like that, that's that's what you know, we do. We, we we love rock and roll. We love playing music. Uh, Juice loves Juice. Back in the day, was big in the BMX bike, so he still like, believe it or not, still rides his BMX bikes uh, and stuff like that's that. That's cool. To BMX. <laughs> Oh, man. I love it too as well, man. Like I love yeah. the sports scene and all that coming up when we were growing up and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. like still love all that stuff. Like we still hang out after this juice 
is also a big like collector of old toys and stuff like we got evil Knievel, uh you know the the we're, we're making the jumps with the evil Knievel yeah. wind up and yeah. uh so you know we, we love all that stuff we love comic books and we love uh you know we got all kinds of you can see the rest of the studio we got like all you know, King Diamond action figures and fucking like we love knickknacks and stuff like that, and we love Kiss. <laughs> but yeah, you know that's what we do for fun: music and you know, mm-hmm. you know, hang out and you know. I, we really, since we've been doing the uh, engineering yes. end of it, Dennis, we really love to to mix and to be in the studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if it was just doing a mix on something. Or an edit on, on, on a video or something like I, I we'll just we just like like to work. Yeah. Cool man. We're not playing yeah. music. We're probably, we're probably talking about it. Yeah. 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 This is amazing that uh, there's so many people on social media that are doing it again like us. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Have you done it before? And just like it's weird that there's so many people all around the country. It's just and they're yeah. all doing it themselves and. And then we're doing it for the love of the music, yeah. the it's love a... of doing it, the art of it. And, you know, like like when we were younger, we would be like, "Oh, we're gonna get," you know, we're doing this to get signed or whatever. You know, we had big aspirations when we were younger, mm-hmm. and uh, we're doing this. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Now it's just so nice to be like we're doing it because we love fucking rock and roll. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cool, man. All right, man. This has been fun. Yeah, well, I understand. Thanks for having us thanks on. For thanks, having us on thanks, for, thanks for even considering us. I'm sorry I talked to you. You know, I, I took up so much of the, the talk time. <laughs> oh, that's what it's for. Get everybody to know everybody. Yeah, absolutely, man. Great idea. It's good you're doing it, man. It's, you know. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. We're going to be listening out for all your stuff now, man. So. We, we had always talked about getting to the podcast. You got, you the got podcast. three fans now. <laughs> all right.